needs to take deep breaths. It's been uh. a really tumultuous last couple of days. Uh. <sighs> so if you're in your wherever you are right now, make some weird noises. Just it helps, guys. We it did helps. it right now at the beginning I'm of sorry? this. And we'll do it at, on three. One, two, three. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> Oh my God, I hope it doesn't scare you guys I away. A, I know, I had a really <laughs> rough week. Thank you so Me much too. For, for joining us. This is the Pot Smoking Moms. We are a podcast about parenting and cannabis. If this is your first time, thank you so much for joining us. Please, please be friends with us on social media, potsmokingmoms.com. You'll find everything you need to know about us there. I'm your host, Sunny D. I was about to say, I'm your host, Captain J. <laughs> I'm your host, Sunny D, along with our homegirl, Captain J. Hello, hello, hello. If you like our podcast, which you should, please uh, rate, subscribe, review, share. Hit us up in the DMs. We love listening to you. So please hit us up. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been kind of kooky this week. Yeah. It's been nonstop in my house. So. Yeah. with the, You have lots of construction going down. Literally not livable. <laughs> not livable. Yeah. Like my... Gr- the. Yeah, that's why I said we should come here and do the podcast here. Yeah, yeah, it was a good idea. That video you sent me yesterday, I was like, whoa, like your whole kitchen's broken. Yeah, I don't have a, I mean, the sink is work works, but we found that it leaks into the wall. So we're trying not to use it um, until the insurance claim comes in. So we're on that whole hassle. Now we're trying to get insurance on some of the stuff that we discovered in our reno. And one thing leads to another when you're remodeling, man. Complete new plumbing throughout the whole house. Because I have the rotted cast iron. So can you still use your bathrooms? Now I can, yeah. Well, luckily the bathroom that I had in the back that was part of that efficiency when I first bought it was on an independent line separately on PVC already. Okay. So while they were working on everything else, we at least had that bathroom. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, this smokes for all of us. We need this smoke today. Yes. Actually, I ha- I picked up some really, really cool shit over at True Leave. I got this indica called Ray Bay. It's like a, it's like a special edition. <laughs> it's like special edition weed. I mean, it looks special. Yeah, it's so okay. So this, let me see. What is the, the it's citrus and gassy with earthy, spicy undertones. The flavor starts as it smells with lemony citrus up front and a gassy, subtle kush-like taste on the exhale. Also, this is like the highest percentage I've seen at a dispenser here. Well, honestly, truly, I've, I've I feel never like seen flour that high in thirty-six percent in THC for. And I thought my flour that I have, <sighs> I'm, I have some yours kind is of usually. The strongest one. Yeah. You usually get the one that packs the most punch. Yeah, I'm going to have to go see if my dispen- my True Leaf has that in, in stock. Yeah. I, I go to the one in Miami Gardens. You go to the one, which one? Uh, Dania. Dania. Yeah. Oh, and then what did you I got, get? I got pineapple upside down cake. Oh, that one's good. I had that one when they did I the True Grounds. I figured it's even tonight. So we're, we're, we're recording and we're doing later our Zoom meeting. So I'm yeah, like, I can't know. get too slippy. Yeah, for real. And then I was drinking, and it's like I started getting a headache immediately. You instantly regretted it. And I was like, I don't want this anymore. So here we are. Let's. All right. If you got it, blaze it. Let's blaze together. Cheers. I always fuck my shit up. I'm such a dork. God, that tastes so good. What do you mean you fuck it up? Because I forgot I had this had a carb. Oh yeah. Well, she's complicated. She's smoking out of her moon lady. Her naked moon lady. Yeah. <coughs> she's creepy. She's Have you the- named her? Luna. No, naked moon lady. Luna. But naked moon lady is so <laughs> like literal. She's naked. She's a lady. On a She's moon. on top of a moon. <laughs> yeah, we got it covered there with a naked moon lady name. NML. It, I'm sweating balls over here. So what's going on with you, D? Um, nothing. I'm like overwhelmed with all the shit, and I want to do more, and I can't because you know mom life. Yeah. A yeah. little bit anxious, a little bit nervous about Canafest on November 7th. Yeah, me too. 
I'm very anxious about that. I just, I, cause I also don't want to like attach too many preconceptions of like what it's going to be and then be completely disappointed because I don't live up to the expectation that I'm like holding for myself. I get that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I can relate that to that completely. Because I'm always like, yeah, I put on the show. I'm like, yeah, do, do, do. And then I get out there and I'm like, what I'm excited most uh, about actually about that whole thing. What? Is that we're going to be with Pothead Mom. Yeah. And we're going to do that Airbnb thing. And we're going to hang out. And we're going to have time to ourselves. Yeah. And we're going to meet a lot of you guys, Hope, which yeah. I'm, that's what I'm really excited about. I just don't want to like disappoint you guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> I met that Sunny D girl. She's not as fun as I thought she would be. <laughs> and then I'm just going to be like, whoa, oh, whoa. You're, you're putting pressure on yourself. I do that all the time. Just be yourself. I know. But what if myself isn't good enough? No, I'm kidding. If it's not good enough, then fuck it. Nah, then nah. <laughs> Y'all bitches love me, okay? <laughs> Y'all bitches love me. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna have fun. You know, I just overthink things. We all do. Yeah. But um, just thinking about that, you know, we were trying to, like, do stuff and more stuff, and it's just, like... We overwhelmed yeah, ourselves we're with all like, the things we wanted to do. I don't know. I we're was, like, let's take shirts. We're like, fuck the shirts now. At let's just take day. stickers. Let's just take stickers, take our big, fat, flappy mouths over there and <laughs> just <laughs> fucking have a good time. And not not just stickers, not necklaces think so and much like business like. Yeah, it's more to make connections. Yeah, but we'll have and we'll go to have fun, too. But not that's it, really. Just trying to get some stuff going. Then looking and seeing a bunch of, uh, you know, other TikTokers uh, passing us in follows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's social media is difficult because look, we don't have the time to put out the m- amount of content that they put out. I know. And then like the amount the the type of content we put out is more like thought out and sketch yeah, comedy and like we have and, like, to do a lot of production behind it yeah. and a lot of, you know, practicing sometimes doing things a couple times when their content is usually just like, Hey, what's up guys? Yeah. I'm going to hit this or like, how's your day? Or I'm doing this. And they do that like 10 times a day. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's easier to push out that kind of content. I know. As to compare. You got to keep telling yourself like, and we're mom, we do what we do. Cause <laughs> we do what we do. And we are who we are. Like it, that's the bottom line. We get to get together once, maybe twice a week. Yeah. But you know, I, it's just like, you get a really good thing out there a really good piece of content out there and the the response is so insane and you get this like rush of <laughs> endorphins of like oh my god you know Sorry. shit's going viral woo and then like the next few days is like crickets and you're just like um you're seeking like you're looking for that oh oh i gotta have that again like i need more <laughs> i need everybody to well, follow we, me and we love did me have all the like time a good little run there where like a good six seven videos that we posted in a row all went like with yeah, high high views it. yeah high but views and high likes i know i just gotta keep telling myself just fucking but at that time i feel like we were pushing more out because we had more ideas and more time i guess we were doing like i don't know it has three it, it or has four lulls you, so, you know it has its lulls sometimes you're kicking ass and taking names and then other times i mean you just have to it depends what you're focused on there's co- different things that you know exactly we get focused we're trying on. to do other things as well yeah so like the thing that we're doing tonight the zoom right that's mm-hmm. always gonna be fun when we do those yeah those are great Zooms. today's gonna be fun yeah it'll be interesting i think there's gonna be a lot of fuckers on there <laughs> so we should record it <laughs> but anywho uh, let's get into it. You know what that means, guys. I mean, it means we're going to talk about some marijuana-worthy news. Some news nugs coming your way. All right. This article, like, is upsetting. It's, I mean, we've, we've touched base on it several times. Um, so it's, uh, more people were arrested for cannabis last year than for all violent crimes put together. According all to violent Town. crimes. Think about all the different types of violent crimes there are and put all those together. That's crazy. Yeah. 
So last year, uh, police in the U.S. arrested 545,602 people for cannabis-related crimes. Considering cannabis has been deemed essential during COVID, currently 33 states allow for at least some type of medical cannabis use and 11 allow for adult recreational use. Even though, like, we've noticed the stigma has blessed a bit, you know, we're all doing our part, of course. And there's all these advancements and, like, um, cannabis has seen a lot of stronger public support now than ever before, I think. I mean, Definitely. everybody's kind of going in that direction. Um, but even though those things are happening, cannabis still is federally illegal and they're arresting people who use it. Uh, is a big priority right now for crime enforcement. Hmm. Um, according to the recently released Uniform Crime Report from the FBI, more people were arrested for cannabis in 2019 than for all violent crimes put together. Bananas. So the data from the FBI's report revealed that police arrested 545, 602 people for cannabis-related crimes in 2019. The arrest rate is 9% higher than the 495 people arrested for violent crimes the same year. So... Um, those being arrested for cannabis aren't just making money from selling or growing or manufacturing the drug. They're mostly people just using cannabis. The vast majority of these arrests, 92%, were for simple possession of the drug. That's crazy. I mean, that could be anybody. Yeah. That can be anybody, really. So 500 and... Uh, 500,395 of those arrested for cannabis were simply found in possession of cannabis. Even if we take out all of the arrests for being involved in unregulated cannabis commerce and just focus on arrests for cannabis possession, the numbers still outpace out arrests for violent crimes. That's nuts. <sighs> this highlights the inequitable situation between states where cannabis consumers in one state may face serious jail time for an act that has no penalties at all in a state next door. It also makes some question whether law enforcement resources could be better allocated to fighting more serious crimes instead of focusing on busting people for using a common recreational and medicinal plant. Still, arrests for cannabis actually went down by 18% overall last year <clears throat> when compared to 2018. This could be partly due to legal states in Texas, which resulted in far fewer cannabis arrests than in 2018. Um, this is because they uh, passed a bill that allowed for hemp production in the state last year, which shifted the de definition of cannabis to exclude hemp. See, this is where things get complicated because now that hemp's legal, it makes things really difficult. So hemp and cannabis are actually the same type of plant, but it is legally considered to be hemp when it contains less than 0.3%. Yeah, so then, and then the cops can't test it. So it's harder for them to make arrests. Without being able to test exactly. the plant material to determine if it was hemp or cannabis. So that's exactly why you're seeing a lot less arrests. But they're saying just smell alone, like the Pop Brothers at Law like posted, that just smell alone is not a pretense for them to be able to do a search or do anything like that right. because of the fact that they smell the same. Mm -hmm. And they... Uh and they'll take advantage of that, too. But that's why you need to be educating yourselves. I'm really excited for them to come on our show. I know. I'm, like, nervous about that, too. That's kind of playing in the back of my head. Like, I don't want to sound like a total idiot <laughs> around them. But, no, it's um, going to be fun. That'll be really, really interesting um, for that. But this, this is mm -hmm. just prime examples. The data from the FBI also gave clues to where this year's cannabis arrests were more likely to take place. They found that cannabis arrests were least likely to happen in Western states, which have uh, mostly legalized the drug. But those in the Northeast may want to take particular caution around following, uh, following the cannabis laws. 53% of all drug arrests took place in the Northeast part of the country last year. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. in addition to those dwelling in the Northeast, there... Those in the black community may also be at particular risk. Oh, we all knew this. Yeah, we all know that. Of being arrested for cannabis crimes. A recent report from the ACLU looked at data from 2018 and found that black people were 3.6 times more likely to be arrested for cannabis possession than white people. This is despite the fact that both groups use cannabis at similar rates. Even in Western states with recreational cannabis laws, black people were 1.5 to 1.8% to more likely to be arrested for having cannabis. In states with the worst racial disparity in arrests, like Montana and Kentucky, black people were 9.4 to 9.6 percent more likely to be arrested. In some counties, disparities were so high, black people were 50 times more likely to be arrested. Insane. That's wow. why, I mean, look, I'm all and for it. And then you it. hear things, how can you not say there's not systemic racism? Yeah. 
when you uh, hear statistics like that. Yeah. And this is why, uh, yeah, we, we, we all want to legalize marijuana, but we all need I mean, to also. It's a big reason why it was made illegal in the first place as a pretense to arrest minorities. Yep. So definitely want I'm excited to have them on to be able to ask legal questions. So if anybody has any legal questions. Yeah. Anything uh, regarding to a uh, pot law, cannabis law. If you have any questions, please shoot them our way. Uh, we will be talking to the um, pot brothers, pot at, brothers law. at law. So exciting. Yeah, I know. Super <laughs> exciting. Um, everybody's a fan of this one. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> you have them like Look, I gotta, I'm honestly, and I, I really got to get used to it because I lower it and I raise it and I play with it. And then, this you is know, Miami. and then my husband's like, <laughs> you got to make sure the levels. And I'm just, I'm, I will get better guys at the soundboard. <laughs> I will get better at the soundboard. It's here. Oh, <laughs> More than 30 pounds of marijuana washed up in the Florida Keys. Late last week. So if week. you guys need to cop some. Just go, go by the keys. Just go by the keys. <laughs> According to the U.S. Border Patrol, this happened last week. They, authorities found eight pounds of marijuana that came ashore in Key Largo. The day before, 23 pounds washed up near wow. Big Pine Key. The day before. <laughs> Just the day before. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Well, that's how many pounds between 53 pounds between those two days. Yeah. No, eight eight pounds and twenty three. Oh, I thought it was thirty pounds and twenty three pounds. Oh, no, twenty three plus than, eight. More than thirty pounds of marijuana washed up on the Florida Keys late last week, and then twenty three pounds. All right, and then eight pounds. So it's oh, I forgot the eight pounds. That I, <laughs> it's the, that's a lot of weed just washing up on shore everywhere. <laughs> Jesus, I know. Like here we are going to True Leaf when we can just go to the Keys. <laughs> And just go to the beach and hang out and hope hope one of these we things We could take my up. dad's boat out and we'll just like patrol the, yeah, the keys. Yeah. <laughs> Which is insane because I, it's so funny. The more I would hear about talk about putting up a wall, you know, the whole Mexico wall, the more I heard of like them finding drugs in the ocean. Yeah. You know, me going, you sure you want to put find a wall a way. There? They're going to find wanna... a way always. You might want to put a wall in the ocean maybe. Do you yeah. not see the tunnels they built under the ground, they're yeah. going to find a way always. I the know. wall's not going to stop them. Uh, can you imagine? What would you do if you found? What would you do if you were on the boat with your dad and you found one of these big ass? Well, <clears throat> depends, little, how, depends how well it was sealed. <laughs> listen, do you think it's ruined? If it's in the ocean in a you vacuum, just dry seal? it out. They get blocks of the stuff. They're not just going to shove know. a bag. Since I'm with my dad, I would most likely report it. I mean, you would report it. I, I mean, I don't know. All right, let me continue with this article because uh, really, that's <laughs> like, where you went. In, and I was turn like, it oh, in. We're gonna smoke uh, that shit, right? Everybody would say we're gonna smoke like, yeah, that dad, shit. Yeah, dad, I'm gonna go turn it in, dad. I'll turn it in. Don't worry. Even your dad would be like, "What are you fucking crazy? <laughs> smoke that shit. Smoke weed every day, <laughs> day. Yeah, get out of here with that shit." Oh, my God. But apparently it's not just weed washing up on shore. Yeah. So <laughs> the lost shipments appear to be a trend in South Florida and the Keys. Between August and September, nearly 150 pounds of marijuana was found either washed up somewhere on the island chain or floating offshore. Jeez. And in July, more than 50 pounds of cocaine washed up near Grassy Key. Earlier that month, 29 bricks of cocaine came ashore in the Middle Key city of Marathon. According to oh marathons agents. where me and my family would always rent every summer. Yeah, marathons like between here and the Keys. It's like, like that it's nice the perfect little, middle nice one. Yeah. We get nice house with a dock because my dad has a boat. So we would get. Have you ever been to Robbie's? Everybody's been to Robbie's. Maybe I don't know. With a tarp, feed the tarpon. You feed the tarpon, and no, then there's always some no. asshole who sticks his whole hand in the water and gets no, bitten by the tarpon. No, we would just take the boat out and stay in the house that we rented yeah. and go snorkeling and that kind of stuff. Well, we, we would cook in the house. We would never go out to eat or anything. No, that's nice. Because we would like we catch your we shit spend, and eat it. Yeah, exactly. Hell yeah. Fresh fish and lobster well, and whatever we got. Yeah, I never had a dad with a boat. So I would go to Robbie's. <laughs> they do like I've never went gone fishing before. It's fun. I'd like to go one day. 
I just feel like we I would get. It. I don't know. My dad would love to take We've us out. We've gone. There's this thing in the Keys that's so great. Oh, my God. The Keys are so much fun. Let's I've talked that. to several girls going, go. If you're going to do your bachelorette party, go to the fucking Keys. There's a Sebago out there. It's called Sebago. And you can do. So it's like a, it's like 150 bucks. In the morning, you get on a catamaran. They give you breakfast and they get you out into the ocean in a little area. They dock. They have like jet skis. They have like trampolines. You can go kayaking. They have they even do parasailing, which I opt out of because that should would terrify me. Do you think in December that's still like weather to do that stuff? I mean, in Florida, it's always hot here. Maybe not to be. Well, but you're in the ocean. It's pretty, pretty cold. Cold. But whatever. But it's pretty great. And then you get and then they take you out further and then you go snorkeling, which I can't do. I love snorkeling. I can't do it. You I need to try the other mask. You need to try the other mask that you don't have to put it in your mouth. Oh, maybe. That it's it's like the a whole mouth face nose mask. thing. <laughs> the whole mouth nose, nose thing makes me want to puke. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. It's not easy breathing through a snorkel, but I'm used to it because I've been doing it since I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. But you go snorkeling on a reef. They go. They take you there, and then you get back on the boat. And then, I mean, you don't care for this, but you could drink all the way back to shore. Like, yeah, all you can drink beer or mm. wine. My husband would like that. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty fun. And then they give you lunch too. It'd be nice if you could smoke on the boat. I know. <laughs> well, maybe if we can rent a uh, our own. Oh my god! Wouldn't it be amazing to rent our own like yacht? Oh, Here we are. We're building. We're, we're building our vision board for everyone to see. <laughs> we should do that. That would be fun to do one night with a Zoom with our peoples. We should. We should. Vision but you day. know that I wouldn't take it seriously at all, and then I would just make a funny board filled with things to make everybody laugh because I don't take anything seriously, really, <laughs> usually. But it'll be fun. I don't know. Maybe that's the next sesh we do. Next, uh, next live sesh we do. Yeah. If we don't do something if this for Halloween works out, night. If this works out and people can carve their pumpkin without. I'm so sad that all this surprise stuff is happening in my rental because I was really hoping I would be done before Halloween and I can have you guys over and like a few, just a couple friends over and do something on Halloween night. But uh, I'm going to do a trunk or tree at a church. Yeah, I know. Just because like I have to do something. And that seems I'm like a more go out like con- contained thing. You have to like sign up for a time. Anyway, why are we why are we talking about this now? We can Halloween talk about this later. Up. Yeah, I know Halloween. Halloween's important. I know Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. It's, look, it's Halloween, Halloween on a Saturday with a full moon, and it's like we have to get together and focus intentions on good things because it's right before a very important thing. And let's. Oh, oh! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was stepping on. We have a weird setup. Yeah, we always weird. I, I think we're, my, my headphones got pulled off. Yeah, I think we're always. <laughs> we haven't gotten used to <laughs> any particular setup yet. <laughs> well, we're doing it at your house this time. I know. And my house is in shambles. I know your house is in shambles. We'll pray for your house. We'll keep <laughs> your house in our thoughts and our prayers. We had a pleasure of sitting with a new creator friend. Uh, you guys may know her from TikTok as Ollie Rose. We found her and we fell in love with her. I don't give a fuck attitude and just how honest and relatable she was as a mom. She started following us and we were like, uh, does she smoke? How, how does she, why is she following us? Well, it turns out she does. And we had some awkward fun. I'm really excited. We were trying to trace back like how we, how we li- linked up with you, how we found you, how we ha- asked you to be on our show. I was like, I, I was like telling Jay, how, how do how do we know she smokes pot? I don't ever like talk, hear her talk about pot. On <laughs> I TikTok. think just because she followed us, I, I kind of knew about it that often. Yeah, well, she. I guess we yeah. automatically figured if you followed us, you might be down with the with smoking. Yeah. Plus, like my eyes look shiny in a lot of my videos, and people are always like, "Are you high?" And I'm like, "Eh." No. But are you <laughs> open like with are you open with saying it on TikTok or like I mean obviously you don't have it's not like a the you know I don't have to be doing all uh, pop even us sometimes we're like right. oh, a pop video Yeah, right I've made I've made videos talking about it but they got removed so I just kind of stopped bringing it up but I talk about it on Instagram and in like my Instagram stories and stuff so if people follow me there they know. 
Yeah, it's but uh, TikTok likes to ban stuff. So. Yeah, we got to be creative We've to gotten keep very it creative. To just yeah, <laughs> try to make it pass, and then and sometimes <laughs> I'll be holding random objects to make it seem like things, and then I'll be like, it was a football. Like you can't. That's not. Yeah. They try to take the football one Can't down. I was like, there's this. nothing wrong in this video. They look at it again. They they had to put it back. We just appealed it. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're just annoying with their standards. They are. I can't wait till somebody else takes over and then they just throw those standards right out the window. So how did you get into yeah. TikTok and making TikToks? You've been a um, year. I saw it recently. You've been one year, yeah. right? I downloaded it just to watch videos because Kalik watching them and he was like you're gonna start posting videos and i was like no i'm not i'm only on here to like look at stuff and then i ended up where i'm at <laughs> <laughs> i didn't understand it at first because when i first downloaded the app it was just like it was straight tiktok it was like all the dancing teenagers and i was like why are people using this and then the more i started using it i was like oh this is okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is good <laughs> Yeah, I think over here we were using it purse. I had downloaded it when it was musically a long time ago. And then I was like, oh, this is full of children. And then later I downloaded yeah. it again as TikTok. And I was like, uh, oh, it has cool filters. So I kept a private yeah. one, did filters on my own and didn't like, you know, whatever. And then I, we started a pot smoking moms one after we started the podcast. And it was just like wow all right yeah. people like this shit let's do it <laughs> yeah let's like keep going the first video that i posted was when i i went so it was in the same day i posted like five videos um but the first one i ever posted was just like me and nohea at the gym and it was really stupid and it used like a crappy audio but then later in the day i posted like a five-part series um and it was like a tutorial on how to dye or tint your eyebrows and i blew up and all of a sudden i had like seven thousand followers and i was like it's all oh, it takes. i'll just keep doing this then i guess <laughs> when i first started watching your content i was like oh she's she's so cute and charming and charismatic and then you started having this conversation about and this is what was like oh yeah we need to have her on the show because like for sure <laughs> you have started having this conversation with other moms and other women about like if your husband if you if your husband allows oh, oh, you to dads. go yeah to the store to run errands that's not like your alone time that's not like your me time like no yeah, and that whole narrative and that whole conversation kind of, like, blew my mind in the sense of, like, you know, yeah, she's saying it. It's the absolute truth. Like, we have to give ourselves a little more credit and a little more leeway to, like, allow ourselves to do shit and not. Yeah, yeah getting coffee and doing our Target run. Yeah, even though we enjoy that's going to Target, that's yeah. not really really self -care. and people were offended by it at first they were like well that's my self-care it's not your retail therapy there is and i'm like no i get that but like if he's just allotting you an hour to go to target like that's not like why you have a curfew that's that doesn't count yeah that's controlling you yeah that's a bit old yeah. bit controlling did you want to light this yeah. up i see you packed uh, i packed a bowl yeah do you want to light this though we have this oh i forgot we had that i'm sorry i invite the guest to smoke. I don't know if you can or you're, I mean. No, I can. I'm out. So I'm going to do uh, uh, the thing where I heat up my little mini bowl and hope that the rest. Yes, the up. resin hits. <laughs> COVID oh has gosh. put me in a drought. <laughs> you're in a, a recreationally legal state. Yeah. That's awesome. So I can just go to the store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we have it here medical. So we have our cards. Um, yeah, I used to live in Orlando, and that was something I was going to want to do, but I, I never ended up doing it before we left. Oh, so you lived in Orlando? How long were you in Florida? A year. A year? You're like, I need to get the fuck yeah. out of there. <laughs> so um, since it's a recreationally legal state, you guys have, like, um, brands and stuff like that? Because here we have everything is, like, very medical, comes in a sealed you know package and it's yeah. just very few di dispensaries and only the dispensary can dispense their own stuff they don't have many other brands sold um where like where i've seen in california they have like all sorts of different brands from different um yeah. farms and stuff like that you guys have that in nevada too 
Yeah, I think so. I'm going to be honest. The dispensary gives me a lot of anxiety. So I usually make Coleco go into the store and buy me stuff. There you go. I've only been in there once. (laughs) But I have like specific stuff I like. So he just goes in there and he grabs stuff for me. And what are your preferences? Do you have a preference like indica, sativa, hybrid? Sativa. Indica makes me go to night if I and I can't because I usually do it at nighttime more so than during the daytime just because with the kids, if I smoke too much during the day, I'm going to want to take a nap and the kids don't nap. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the citrus tsunami number nine is my favorite because I can usually like clean and do stuff while I'm on it and it doesn't make me tired. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say there's some good sativa brands that um, strains that should not yeah. make you drowsy. I like super lemon yeah. haze is great. Yeah. And yeah. Jack Herrera is like, you know, the the guy everybody can trust. <laughs> right, right. There's um there's a couple of hybrids that I usually get which names I can't remember for like my pen, my vape pen, but I don't like using that that much because it makes me anxious. I feel the same way. So I'm not a I'm of- not a fan of the vapes. I don't like the way it makes mm-hmm. me feel. Um yeah. it's not the same high. I don't like the way they taste. No, it, it makes it's yeah, harsher on it your hurts throat. My lungs, it hurts your lungs. I'll it's use like it. that's just not safe. I'll- all the way no I'll Don't use it, it and then I'll go and I'll sit down on the couch and my throat will feel like it's just straight up burning and I'm yep. like yeah then I'm not gonna use this this is it for me I so stick to my flour <laughs> yeah and then gummies I have gummies but I can only eat like a quarter of a gummy so you're one of you else. edibles do work for you and you just need like a small yeah. dosage yeah otherwise like I get to <laughs> I'm like too useless. So I'll get like the 10 milligram gummies and then I'll bite them off into like quarters and then just eat them that way, which I guess it doesn't really seem like they're that much, but they last all day. So like, I can't, yeah, yeah. I can't eat that much. (laughs) You started being very open too about mental health recently. And you had talked about you, you, this was the first time they, um, they put you on medication. No, I used to be on medication when I was younger. My mom uh, would take me to her psychiatrist and then I would be on whatever they decided that I was uh, needing. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, but then uh, like four or five years ago when I got pregnant, I'd stopped taking my medication and then I kind of like got PPA and PPD and then like spiraled and never really recovered. (laughs) So, and then after I shaved my head, I was like, I think I should go to the doctor now. I don't have any more hair to cut. I had um, postpartum anxiety and then postpartum depression, Mm -hmm. but the anxiety was one I didn't know was like a thing. So when I had our first, yeah, when I had our first, I would like obsessively wash my hands and bleach everything. And if I like touched something and then needed to touch the baby, I would have to like wash my hands before I could touch the baby again. Even if all I did was like touch a blanket and I didn't want anybody to touch him or hold him. Like it was just really obsessive. And I kept thinking someone was going to like take him and kill him or he was just going to die. Um, and I kind of didn't know that it was like super abnormal. I thought this was just like what being a mom was like. So I just kind of, survived I didn't really talk to anybody into about it until like recently so I joined like a bunch of Facebook mom groups uh which was like the worst mistake of my life um because I thought that's where I would get the support that I needed but it was not um but there was a bunch of moms who were in there and and the culture in those Facebook mom groups is just like it's normalized to not have spousal support and it's normalized to just be depressed and be at home with your kids and not have health or help and not have anybody so I thought that like how I was feeling was just how I was supposed to be feeling and it really wasn't until about a year ago when I was like I am not meant to be locked up in a house like I can't do this anymore that is not what I wanted to do with my life so it wasn't until it really wasn't until I got on TikTok um, when I started like seeing a bunch of videos of other moms talking about how like that's not normal and like men need to be helping that I was like okay so I need to do something then because this isn't working for me anymore but I kind of just suffered through it for a few years well but I mean I think ultimately it led you here and I think that's that's one of the when you started saying that stuff I was like yeah absolutely I want to talk to you about this experience and share with 
other moms because we have built a pretty great community of moms and I feel yeah. like it's such an important message to kind of snap people into it and be like, listen, mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a 50 50 relationship. And yeah, sometimes you have to take one for the team, but not all the time. And he has to yeah. also take one for the team. And it's like, a, right. you know, a balance. And if it's not that way, you need to start having conversations about it. Mm hmm. Because a lot of women live this way and people will, and they'll listen to you when you're talking about how this shouldn't be normal, but they're being gaslit so much that they still don't realize like it's abuse. It's, it's like emotional abuse for you to have to like stay home and not have any type of support. And he gets to go and do whatever he wants to while you don't. And right. like, it's hard to come to terms with that fact. And then when you do, you're like, oh, I need to, like, I need to do something. He needs to change. He needs to do something about this. And it's, it's ju just the comments I was getting on those videos from some people. From like so random, sad. I know some of, some of the guys. User were, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, one, blah, 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 blah. have no content. Yeah. People who hide behind. The trolls. Rage. So many men. Those people. So many men. And they're hurt so bad. All of those guys. They're yeah. so mean. They're so hurt yeah. too. Yeah, no, for real. And then there was a bunch of women who just had like a, sh a just a shit ton of internalized misogyny who were mm -hmm. like, you're wrong. Like, our job is to stay home and only watch the kids. And he doesn't have to do anything. Yeah, but like, why? That's those are his kids, too. I don't like, agree and with I that made that one video about it. I was like, he doesn't want a relationship with his kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, he and doesn't want to. Like super what? important. Yeah, like it's his kids. He should want to spend time with them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Outside of the fact that he thinks that you need to be doing any everything, like they're his kids, like he doesn't want to be with his kids. Why? I can't. I it can't stand no when they say the dad's babysitting. No. Yeah. What is dads that? don't babysit? They're being. They're no. parenting. They're being with their children. It's not like I used oh, to use that who, terminology too. Who's babysitting? Oh, he's with. They're with daddy. Daddy's babysitting. No, he's not babysitting. Then he's with his dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I was always home with the kids. So every once in a while, I would be able to leave my house for like 30 minutes. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, daddy gets to babysit for 30 whole minutes. And then I would have to go back. And I'm like, oh, this is not. I don't yeah. know. That's really restrictive. Yeah. I think yeah. too, though, but I also believe that we as women kind of always do the most. And mm -hmm. we make excuses for ourselves. And sometimes we need to yeah. stop ourselves and be like, yo, you know what? Go straight to that room and do whatever the fuck you want. Like, don't, you yes. don't have to ask or like, do what yeah. you gotta do. They do what they gotta do. That was do. my problem. I was like enabling behavior that I should not have been enabling, but that was because I thought that I also had to do everything. So that that's another thing is like, when you're talking to women about this stuff is getting them to understand that they're still their own entity and their own person outside of all of this and that they need to be able to take care of themselves. So growing up, was your mom like that? Was she always the one doing everything in the home? Is no, is that my what, parents like had a pretty 50 50 split? Like my uh, my mom was a nurse and my dad was in the military. And so and my mom worked nights in the ER. So at nighttime, my mom would be gone. And during the day, my dad would be gone. So they would flip roles. My dad cooked a bunch and, and did like laundry. And, and it yeah, was pretty, so you like, know that. Yeah. That exists yeah. and what you yeah. had was so not I don't normal. know what happened to me. Like I had kids and I was like, Oh yeah, I'm just gonna stay home and literally do everything. Well, I feel like when we included. first have kids, a lot of mothers want that like yeah. that opportunity to be able to stay home. And I know that when I had my son, I was upset that I had to go back to work. And I yeah. wished I could have been home with him longer. I wanted to at least be with home with him until he started elementary school. But yeah. we just couldn't like I had to work so that we can survive. You know, Miami is an expensive exactly. city. So, you know, I can see that we're yeah, you were excited to be home and stay home and yeah. be with your kids and be a mom because we fucking love being yeah, moms. I think you also yeah. when and then but then you realize but you, you never need your work. time. You exactly. Never you never leave have leave your yeah, own you time. Never, you're never always 24 out. hours. Yeah, exactly. And you, well, yeah. we were on the road too. Coleco is a traveling electrician. So we were moving like every few months to different locations. So I literally had no support at home and he would be working like 
10, 11 hours a day with like an hour or two of commute during the daytime as well. And, and so I felt my personal thing was like, I felt like I needed to earn the fact that I was allowed to stay home with the kids, which was the mentality that I should not have had because I shouldn't have been like slaving away during the daytime, doing everything for everybody and still not having a moment to myself like at nighttime. Which is crazy. So I think that's even, another problem. Even yeah. when we have downtime, we're fucking doing TikToks and doing, doing fucking shit. social media posts and fucking yeah. making podcasts. And it's like, yeah, yeah for our free time, what's free time? Or oh, we're thinking yeah. about what needs to be done. There's yeah. none. No, exactly. <laughs> it took four years. I finally got my oldest onto a sleep schedule. And then Nohea, when I had him, he was he was the best like sleeping baby. All he's done is sleep properly and I'm like if there is a god he knew that I needed this so bad because Kalani never slept and so now that they both go to bed at seven o'clock every night I have time in the evening to be able to like yeah it's really a good bedtime (laughs) yeah it's the great bedtime what time do they wake up uh like 5 36 oh yeah but still but that's cool good bedtime that gives you plenty of time at need yeah well it's not too bad though because they got they got a tv in their like playroom so kalani will get up and i'll get him like a z bar like a granola bar and he'll go into the bed that's in there and chill and watch a movie so i can kind of like snooze for another hour or so and then i can get up <laughs> so it's a good routine yeah <laughs> so you want to start a podcast right you talked about it yeah but I had like an idea on what to do, but then I got on meds and now I'm like in a better mood. So I'm like, ah, well, I can't fucking do that. I (laughs) (laughs) got to fix what I'm going to do. I'm not angry about stuff all the time. (laughs) I wanted to do it like a format. It was only going to be like 30 minutes long, probably. I wanted to do two episodes a week. So like one episode would be on like a Wednesday or Thursday and it would be with somebody on it with me. But I wanted the first one of the week to just be myself, but I was going to get like a Google number and have people dial in and like leave messages so I could take the audio and use that. Um, And then just like answer questions like like a helpline or something like a helpline. That's kind of like what it was going to be. And Um, theme it. Every show has a theme or something. Yeah. That's like, I think what I'm going to do. So I don't know. We'll see. I love it. Well, we support it a hundred percent. And this is a reason, another reason why we were like, Oh, she wants to start a podcast. So let's, let's have her on our podcast and, <laughs> and get her into this. I like this. doing this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's a fun. matter of like doing it. All I have to do. The other problem was like, I haven't come up with a name. And so I like, don't want to make a bunch of emails and like accounts for things until I figure out <laughs> yeah. the name part, which I'm using as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bought a so domain delay, delay. i bought domains yeah. and you? i was like yeah i bought domains i had gone like look the reason we got into this was like i was pregnant and obviously i mean i've been uh, smoking for a while and not that i was gonna smoke while i was pregnant but i was like well i wonder what people are saying because this is this is a yeah. topic that's growing and growing and it's going to continue mm-hmm. to be huge and people need resources yep. so yeah. i found um a facebook a facebook group and, i was in a uh, few of the can mommy facebook mom groups <laughs> yeah so i found the one but and then but it was a lot i did realize that a lot of people went there to kind of vent and stuff which like i get mm. you know yeah it, it could be a little messy but i understand some people have nobody to to talk to and that's maybe their yeah. only resort but the people were having conversations about using while they were pregnant and i was like man this needs to be like we need to be able to talk about this more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it needs to be destigmatized. Yeah. And um, and it's like now we've opened up a resource for people to come to. We've talked to you know scientists mm-hmm. and other women who've done it while they were pregnant. And, Doctors, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, there's like when I was pregnant because I had hyperemesis and medication wasn't working for me in the beginning and I couldn't eat anything. So like literally a sip of water would just make me projectile vomit everywhere um, until I got on Zofran. But I was I remember in the beginning there was I joined some of the Canamami groups and there were people like dropping links to actual studies outside of the U.S. from like people who smoke while pregnant and it doesn't it like had no adverse effects and they'd followed the kids up until adulthood and there was no like negative effects from it so yeah I've seen those similar studies too and Mm -hmm. then you're hearing other studies come out like with completely different information yeah. so, so it's like, it, they're they're like there's no really controlled studies they're kind of just mm-hmm. like 
I guess, asking questions. But I myself don't, I don't think that most mothers that are using cannabis when they're pregnant are like abusing cannabis or like just no. smoking to get high because they want to be high all day or a anything lot of like times that because of like nausea exactly yeah. it's either help you know helping them sleep helping them eat helping them mm-hmm. cope with nausea anxiety because they're having severe anxiety yeah, also you are your yeah. emotions are all over the place mm-hmm. i would yeah. understand using it to like not fucking be yeah f- crying all day long. i wouldn't exactly. i wouldn't fucking judge if someone if one of my friends was pregnant and she was using while she was pregnant like i don't know i'm not gonna fucking judge yeah i understand yeah <laughs> i myself it's decided with, like, not to nursing too yeah. but that was just more because out of fear because i didn't know what would yeah, happen Yeah, because you just don't know and since yeah. like i had a miscarriage with my first pregnancy i was like With Mm -hmm. my second, I was like, I don't want to take any risks of doing anything wrong. Yeah. Which even quitting altogether at once could actually be more harmful than, you know, weaning yourself off slowly at the beginning of your pregnancy, which I didn't even Mm -hmm. realize. I had a question for you, actually. Yeah. Um, This is something that's come up, too. We have a lot of of listeners and, and friends that we've made throughout this who have been in relationships with guys who don't like the fact that they smoke. And they're just like, mm-hmm. um, I want to smoke. Them. Throw them away. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to <laughs> ask you what you thought of. That. Was that the question? Yeah. Throw them the fuck away. <laughs> if, if they can't understand what, that. That was my, that was my, um, that was my <laughs> You should have known that was going to be my answer. Consider divorce. We got a question from we a had listener. Gotten, yeah, we had got a question from a listener and I was like, what? I was like, leave Have you divorcing? Leave, yeah. leave. Why would you fucking stay? Why wouldn't you want to be with somebody who's like supporting? Like, I just, I, it's like, medi- I, I don't look at it as like a drug. It's medicine. Yeah. For a lot of us is medicinal. Like I was self-medicating with it before I got on like prescribed medications like pills and like if you're not gonna be with somebody who's gonna like support i don't know it's just not a, it's not a drug yeah <laughs> so it's so not at least not to me so i, I just like who cares yeah. if you're smoking <laughs> who cares yeah exactly that's how i feel if you don't like it don't do it i don't know throw them the fuck away <laughs> yeah i i don't know and i would always <laughs> prefer smoking uh, or yeah. cannabis over drinking any day of the week I feel like yeah, drinking. I'm not a drinker. I don't like. Girl. I'm not a drinker, and I feel like a lot of I'm cannabis kind of users asshole. are like that. <laughs> yeah. I agree yeah. With you. Well, like alcoholism runs in my family, so like I I can't. Um, I did enough like underage drinking to know that I don't need to be doing it as an adult. <laughs> um, so. I yeah I don't know I have a box of wine that's been in my fridge for like a month and every once in a while I'll like drink a glass and then usually by the end of the night I'm pissed off about something so uh, that doesn't happen if I'm high <laughs> no you're happy yeah. usually. and then you go to sleep you know yeah watch and some Martha Stewart over. and then go to right exactly oh my god yeah. I feel like I don't even I can binge watch Sons of Anarchy and go to bed <laughs> yeah I feel like if I drink I just skip any fun part and go straight to hungover yeah I don't even feel yeah. nothing. Every once in a while, my brain tricks me and it'll be like, you need a girl's night out. You need to go out. You need to go and get shit face tonight. This is going to be great. And then I go and do it. And I'm like, I'm not having, I like, I'm having fun until about midnight. And then I'm like, fuck, it's like two hours past my bedtime. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go home. Yeah. Pa- parental fatigue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I drink on live on TikTok sometimes, but I have to like watch myself because then I start talking about things I shouldn't be talking about. <laughs> yeah, inhibitions go through. out the window for sure. Yeah, when I get stoned, I'm on live. I just get so self-aware that I'm like, what am I? I'm such a dork. Why are people watching yeah. me? I'm like, I gotta get off of here, guys. Bye. She's so hard Every on herself. Time. Yeah. No, I get it. The last time I was high on live, Coleco and I were painting. We like turned on um, one of those paint night videos on YouTube and painted shit. And I kept forgetting what I was doing. And then Coleco was like four steps ahead of me. And by the end of it, my pumpkin looked like a turnip and it was just like really bad. <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> but after that, I was like, oh, I can't fucking do this shit on here. <laughs> so this was really fun. We really appreciate you yeah. uh, opening up and talking to us and, um, you know, just being part of the mom Thank community, supporting mom community. Yes. Yeah. It's my favorite community. I talk shit about it sometimes, but like, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
there's a lot of happening in the mom community. There's so much. And, yeah. And that was so much fun. Uh, if you want to uh, catch up with her, she uh, you can find her on Twitter at Ollie Rose underscore um, or on TikTok the same. And at in, on Instagram, she's at Lauren Stiletto. So thanks so much for listening to our show. Uh, we are so thankful that you guys, um, you know, uh, listen to us talk shit. <laughs> um, we thank you so much for, for spending your break with us. We definitely want to give a special thank you to the our podcast monthly supporters, Lauren Blaine, April, April Collins, Christy Rodriguez, Destiny Adams. And we got a new patron. Yeah. We are so excited for Yanni Reyes. Thank you so much. She is one thank of our you. brand new patrons. We have our patrons page linked on our bio and Instagram because uh, Instagram is being kind of a dick about our our yeah. website. I can't believe they won't let us put our website. That shit is so frustrating. It's it? so frustrating. It's not like you can just call up Instagram and be like, hey, Instagram, we're not trying to sell weed, bro. We just have a podcast about weed. Can you let us link our fucking <laughs> website? <laughs> Please. Instagram's like, yeah, Not even whatever. our link tree. Doesn't even let us put our link not tree. Not even our link tree. And so then Instagram, meanwhile, is like, uh, save it for your diary, ladies. <laughs> we got bigger fish to fry. Save their tears for your pillow. Yes. Um, but we have our patron link up. We're uh, slowly bringing extra content, longer interviews, um, videos, more personal things that we don't want to share with every single person. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, if you like, come over to our Patreon and um, support us there. And we will in turn support you as well. Thanks so much. Uh, follow, like, review, subscribe. Listen to the Pot Smoking Moms. Interact with the Pot Smoking Moms. See love ya. You.